So I've told you we're going to look at fluid movement across the capillary. What is this called? This is called bulk flow. The bulk movement, so there's going to be a kind of a lot of movement of fluids. So here's a capillary bed, and you know what the red and blue indicate. This is going to be oxygenated, and this is going to be deoxygenated. And that switch occurs, that's shown as purple, oxygenated, um, in between there. So we're actually not going to be looking at the movement of gases specifically. Um, so you do need to remember that happens. You have oxygen you know, leaving here and carbon dioxide getting picked up all along those beds. We'll actually come back to that, the respiratory system. This is about water, fluid, right? Right there, we got fluid. So we're going to look at fluid movement across. And basically, it's going to move out here. This is water and back. And actually, I don't want to have it there. I want to have it at the beginning of the capillary bed. It's moving out. It's moving in at the venous end. So here's our arterial end and our venous end. So here is a simplified view of that. We zoom in to a portion of this capillary right at the junction between red, purple, blue. Um, you can see that. So at the arterial end, we've got movement out. At the venous end, movement in. In the middle, there's going to be some place where there's no movement, um, no net movement, because it's got to switch from one to the other. Um, the terms for these are going to be filtration. So if something's filtered, it's going um, out of the blood into the interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid. Reabsorption means we're taking it back in again. So it's going from the interstitial fluid back into the blood. And we'll see these terms again at the kidney. So that's the overview. We're gonna look at what causes, right? How does that happen that these pressures, um, these net movements due to pressure changes change across circulation here? It's gonna be due to differences in pressure. And of course, there's more than one type of pressure. We've already talked about one type of pressure, blood pressure. When I say blood pressure, what is that? That's actually hydrostatic pressure. So it's the pressure of water literally pushing inside a vessel. So when we said blood press pressure, um, systolic over diastolic, MAP, all that is hydrostatic pressure, abbreviated HP. Um, but there's gonna be another type of pressure osmotic pressure, which you've heard about, right? You know about osmotic pressure. Um, if you put a red blood cell into a vial of distilled water, water is going to flow into it because of osmotic pressure and that cell is going to burst. We saw that in 211. So these are the two pressures we need to consider. Two pressures that are um, relevant in the capillary. These pressures are present in the capillary and out of the capillary, right? There is a hydrostatic pressure that exists in here and one that exists out here. So I've got a, this pop up here. So just to emphasize that, there is always an interstitial hydrostatic pressure, the hydrostatic pressure of the interstitial fluid. It's typically um, pretty low, but it's something. Capillary hydrostatic pressure. This is what's in the blood at the capillaries. So this is blood pressure at the capillaries. At the arterial end, this is going to be important. It is important always, but it's going to be the main driver. Notice these abbreviations, HPIF, hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial fluid. This is different than what your book uses, you're welcome to use the abbreviations in your book. Um, I just need to be consistent over time with myself. Um, you're welcome to write it out to actually give it meaning, right? Um, capillary hydrostatic pressure, HP, in the capillaries. You should know what they mean. So hydrostatic pressure, pretty simple, right? Um, it's 
the pressure due to the presence of water molecules. The more water um, and the more force that's coming with, so from the heart, that pump is going to increase hydrostatic fresh pressure. The other pressure is osmotic pressure. And here's my little schematic of this. What are these little green things do you think? These are going to be various things that can't diffuse across the membrane. So proteins such as serum albumin, remember that proteins is the most common protein in the plasma. And we said one function of that protein was to contribute to the osmotic pressure in the capillaries, in the blood, remember that? So proteins, um, red blood cells also actually, these are things that cannot pass across the capillary walls that cannot diffuse in a continuous capillary or, or kind of think, think of that here, can it diffuse or move across the capillary, across the vessel wall, which is the capillary here. So there's more of that stuff inside the capillary than there is in the interstitial fluid. That's what the green is showing. These are red blood cells, serum albumin, there's some stuff in the interstitial fluid. There's proteins out there. Um, there's some cells floating around, but not as much as what's in the blood cell. I'm sorry, in the capillary. And a lot of that's like albumin, right? That was the major component of our plasma. So these, the amount of stuff in there contributes to the osmotic pressure. There is a capillary osmotic pressure that's dependent on the concentration of this stuff and there is interstitial osmotic pressure that's dependent on this stuff. And you should be thinking already, the capillary osmotic pressure is always gonna be higher than interstitial because there's more stuff here. So these are the two pressures that each have two locations to think about that each contribute to net filtration pressure, which is what we want to, the number that we want to be able to consider when asking, is filtration going to occur? This is NFP here. Or is reabsorption going to occur? So if the filtration pressure is high, we're going to have movement out of the capillary. That's filtration. Um, this can be negative. We'll see examples. That's going to allow for reabsorption. So the two separate pressures contribute to net filtration pressure. Let's do a learning check here. Define the following and state whether the forces are in or out.